tonight on Most Shocking. A desperate run from the law takes a deadly turn. Got the shotgun out! When the suspect opens fire on police. Plus, a gunman terrorizes a gold shop in a daring daytime raid. And when a clerk is jumped, it's the robber who suffers a painful smackdown. Then, Officers pose as a camera crew to free a hostage from a knife-wielding madman. Later, Georgia troopers use pedal-pounding force to run renegades off the road. This is not a movie. Everything you're about to see is real. Brace yourself. This is most shocking criminal behavior. Did they give you any information on the suspect? Oyster Creek, Texas. The white male has hit two. Sergeant Chris Sigilski catches up to a man who just robbed a supermarket, but looks to be in no hurry to get away. It seems that after he had robbed the store, he had just left and sat near the intersection, very close to the store that he robbed, as if he was waiting on the units to arrive. The suspect is an ex-con named Willie Hunt. And he left a message with the store owners. He told them, police are not taking me alive this time. More units converge. Yet the crook shows no fear and no concern for his stolen loot. Three, he's throwing money out of the window. Got money all over 288. Hunt's bizarre behavior has officers on edge. It seemed like uh, he was trying to accumulate more police cars behind him. Now, with a fleet of cruisers on his tail, Hunt becomes more aggressive. Converge, hoping to end this chase right here. We're trying to pull another Huey. We're going to try to block him in. Okay, he's made another Huey. Hunt slips through the trap, but then ratchets up the danger to a whole new level. Be advised, he's now hanging a shotgun out. He's displaying it to me. He brandished the weapon. He raised it and he stuck it out of the window as if waving it to me. The driver suddenly stops and makes a fateful choice. I don't remember seeing too much other than that gun raising. I remember the loud boom of the gun itself. Police swarm the down shooter. That's when Sigelski makes a shocking discovery. I recognized him. He was one of those people that uh, while you're patrolling in the neighborhoods, he would stop you, ask if you're hungry, see if he could make you something to eat. Uh, he never gave me any indication that uh, anything like this would have been done by him. It's a tragic outcome that officers did everything they could to avoid. There were so many opportunities where he could have stopped, but I honestly feel in my heart that when he raised that weapon and fired the shot, he was relying on us to return fire. New Orleans, Louisiana. Saturday night kicks off at a local watering hole. Three men enter the pub. But they're not customers. They're a gang of bar bandits. Hell-bent on a jackpot, these set their sights on video poker. Bartender Sierra Kirk is out the winnings. 
We have legalized gambling in the bars where you put money into somewhat like a slot machine and then it pays out in cash dividends and so we have to keep a large uh, sum of cash on the premises to pay it out. Sierra's register is stocked with thousands of dollars. An easy target. The assailants loiter around the pool table and devise a plan. One of the men asks for change, then makes a bold move. Brazenly walking behind the bar. With gun in hand, he takes aim at Sierra and digs the 9mm into her ribs. My whole concept of reality was thrown out the window when I saw the gun. He told me to get the money and I said, sure, I, you know, whatever you want, take it, here it is. The leader stays behind the bar making sure the cash is cleaned out. While another henchman demands the customer's wallets. Everybody cooperated with the robbers. Some people started not to, but then they made it very clear that I was in physical danger with a gun to me. After the till is emptied and pockets picked, the perp orders Sierra to the floor. He just told me to get down and to not look up. And then he put the gun to the back of my head and I thought for sure that they were gonna shoot me. Sierra lies helpless, not knowing if she will live or die. As soon as I hit the floor, I started crying. And I was thinking about the people that I care about. A waiter walks into the terrifying scene and is ordered onto the ground. As the customers are herded into the back, one of them makes a break for the front door and takes a sharp blow to the head. The desperados flee with thousands of dollars, even as new patrons stroll inside. Thanks to Sierra's calm demeanor and compliance with the outlaws, everyone survives the brutal holdup. Topeka, Kansas. Store clerk Jeff Williams is working the late shift when he spots trouble. Well, I noticed a person came in that he wasn't a regular. So he kind of walked around the store and I kind of noticed it, kind of got uneasy. Suddenly, Jeff is savagely attacked from behind. But this thief picked the wrong clerk to mess with. Not only is Williams taller and heavier, he's also a trained wrestler. He quickly puts the felon in a full Nelson. I was really surprised when he jumped on my back. He uh, asked me to give it all up. Give it all up. But Williams isn't giving anything up without a fight. After he grabbed me, I kind of was feeling his hand to make sure he didn't have a weapon in his hand. and I noticed he didn't, so I kind of slung him into the wall. And then I slammed my body against his body. And I think that knocked the wind out of him. A nearby customer dials 911. Sergeant Ron Gish is a crime prevention specialist. He knows the danger of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a hardened criminal. I wouldn't recommend fighting, but there is a time when you have to make a decision. When you become the victim of a crime, you have to make a decision, how far am I going to let this go? Williams refuses to let up. He even sprays the man with a fire extinguisher. The battle rages on for six exhausting minutes. Officers finally arrive on the scene and give Williams a much needed breather. Thanks to the tenacious clerk, the suspect, Henry Severa, is behind bars. It's pretty impressive that he was able to control him. You know, once they lay hands on you and try to harm you, I think you have to defend yourself and protect yourself. Coming up, reckless teens in a stolen car lose control and plunge upside down into a lake. Plus... 
A beer thief gets tackled trying to make a quick getaway. Oh, yeah! And later... Get away, baby! An insurance scam goes bust when the con is caught on tape. When most shocking, criminal behavior returns. Fort Worth, Texas. 20-year-old Lucia Milan has been working at her father's store for years. She's never feared for her life until now. The man wearing the cap is not a customer. He's a bloodthirsty criminal. The crook rounds the corner and pulls out a hammer. Then, brutally attacks. He walked towards me with the hammer in his hand in the air and just started hitting me on my head. I was just thinking to myself, I can't believe him. This is happening to me. Lucia endures 12 bone-crushing blows. I was kicking and just telling him to stop, just to stop, and I'll give you the money if you would stop hitting me. So I just saw all the blood and I felt the blood running down my face. Even veteran officers find the assault difficult to watch. It's disturbing. It's a violent attack. It's a vicious attack. Just watching the video alone will cause a turn in your stomach to think about getting hit with a hammer at least a dozen times that we can count on the tape. Fearing each hit will be her last, Lucia pretends to be unconscious. But just when the beating appears to be over, he strikes again. I did think he was trying to kill me. And I did for a second think I was going to die, but... The thief turns his attention to the cash, then delivers one final blow to the surveillance camera. As the hoodlum hammers the lens, Lucia makes a daring move to save her life. His back was towards me, so I got up as fast as I could and ran out of the store. Lucia lives just across the street. An exterior camera captures her staggering to safety. With hammer in hand, the callous con takes off. Police arrive. While Lucia waits for an ambulance, her father, his shirt stained by his daughter's blood, retrieves the surveillance tape. Lucia's wounds will heal, but the memory continues to haunt her family. Fearing the man will strike again, they've taken the extraordinary step of closing their store. But Officer Sullivan won't rest until Lucia's attacker is locked up. He's an opportunistic thief. He's a desperate individual, and he committed a vicious attack on a little girl in broad daylight. And we're going to catch him, and we'll bring him to justice and do the right thing by Lucia and her family. I do want him to be caught and pay for what he's done and get him off the streets as soon as possible before he hurts anybody else. At a jewelry store in Thailand, several female clerks have noticed something outside. A man is putting on a mask and heading their way with an automatic rifle. Within seconds, he smashes the rear display cases and takes off with a handful of gold necklaces. The lone remaining woman finally gets the nerve to stand. She surveys the wasted ruins of her store. Fortunately for the stranded worker, the robber's gun was used only as a glass breaker and not a weapon. In the nearby woods, police find his gloves and shirt, the pockets of which are filled with shells he was ready to use. 
the thief himself is never seen again. These employees did the right thing when confronted by an armed suspect. Get out of his way and live to work another day. Northern Utah, heading toward the Great Salt Lake. A runaway 15-year-old and her two friends have been spotted in her parents' stolen sedan. She'd been down in Las Vegas and was traveling back towards home, coming up alternate 93. Trooper Andrew Prescott stays close. Three of the girls' tires have already been spiked, but she continues to crank up the speed. More spikes are put down. They take out the juvenile's lone remaining tire. But the young girl keeps the pedal floored, rocketing onto a road bordered by a lake. It could become a watery grave. It's a horrifying crash. The teenagers flip off the road, rolling into the lake upside down. I was just hoping they were seat belted in. Nobody was going to be thrown out. Nobody seriously hurt. Incredibly, the rattled trio is able to crawl out of the submerged wreckage. Officers keep them at gunpoint, not knowing if they're armed. The three youngsters are scared out of their wits, but otherwise uninjured. The runaway 15-year-old hadn't even been issued a driver's license yet. But that beats a death certificate any day. Sneeds, Florida. The man in the baseball cap is a thief with a healthy thirst and a load of nerve. A clerk turns her head and the shoplifter is out the door with a 12-pack of beer. Then, minutes later, the bandit is back. No cap this time. And he's ready to steal more brew. The man thinks he's got the clerk baffled but she's on to him and calls the cops. An officer arrives and questions the suspect at the counter. Without warning, the crook bolts for the door. The cop tackles him, colliding into a display of 12 packs. Backup is called, and the beer thief is finally handcuffed. He just added resisting arrest to a charge of robbery. Instead of cracking open a cold one, he is going to be on ice in the county jail. Up next, when rival gangs launch a prison revolt, riot police risk their lives storming the gates. And reckless hoodlums challenge state troopers to a game of high-speed bumper cars. That's straight ahead on Most Chucking Criminal Behavior. Jackson, Georgia. Okay, here we go. Officer Michael Overby is known to his colleagues as the master of the pit. And the driver of this stolen car is about to find out why. The car weaves recklessly in and out of traffic. Overby pulls alongside and gets a special single-fingered message from the fugitive. He flipped me the finger when he come by. So at that time, my speed increased, his speed increased up to speeds of 100, 105, and at times 110. 
Overby tries to knock him off the road. But the felon stays in control. The longer this occurs for him, the more hyped up he's going to get. The sooner the pit maneuver can be performed after the chase begins, the less you are to get somebody in a deadly situation. Overby slides up behind the car and gives it a push. The bad guy spins out of control and slams into the guardrail. The renegade jumps from the wreck. But police run him down along with his female accomplice. When it was all over, I felt good. The only damage that was incurred was to the violator vehicle. Overby has seven successful pits, a feat he credits to precision driving. If you do the pit maneuver right, all you're going to get is some stress, spider webbing. You might get a little chipping here and some transfer of paint here. But if you do the pit correctly, this is all the damage that you should get. Overby's skills are tested again by a suspect in a stolen Honda. The officer closes in to take a shot. Pegging the red at 110, Overby nudges the bumper. The pit works to perfection. Pit is not a ram. You want to lean on the car just enough to break the rear tires loose. And then you have to get off of it. Or you're going to end up in the crash as well. Overby and his colleagues get a welcome surprise when they run a check on this suspect. Let me see him. And the driver was wanted out of Miami, Florida for murder. Uh, the car was reported stolen. Uh, that was a pretty big arrest. 1080, northbound. Most chases don't involve fleeing murderers. The driver of this Impala was only wanted for speeding. The officer creeps up on his tail and makes his signature move. Watch again. Behind a wall of dust and debris, the Impala spins three times and rockets across the highway. Another petty crook bites the dust, courtesy of the master of the pit. Yet the danger of these high-speed showdowns is never lost on this veteran lawman. Every night and every morning, I thank the Lord for for giving me another day. In my career, I've had incidences where I should have died, and I did not. So there's still a reason I'm here. There's still something I'm, I'm supposed to do. Pavancito Prison, Guatemala. A violent gang has seized control of the prison. Even worse, they are reportedly killing members of a rival gang. Police have no choice but to risk their lives to put an end to the bloodshed. Armed with riot gear and tear gas, the officers storm the grounds in formation. A barrage of canisters is launched at the offenders. The prisoners hurl debris at the cops attempt to stand their ground. But their forces are too meager. The riot police prevail. As the convicts are driven back to their cages, firefighters collect the scattered wounded. Authorities soon unearth a horrifying aftermath. Several inmates are injured in the bloody gang war. Police find it hard to claim victory under such circumstances, but they do know their swift action helped save lives.
Brooklyn, New York. Late night at the Vanderveer Deli. The clerk stands at the register. His assistant is about to leave when a crook crashes through the door, pistol whipping him with an Uzi. A second bandit runs in to control the assistant. Then a third appears and covers the door. His buddy slides under the glass security wall, sending the clerk running. But seconds later, one of the holdup men runs back to the lookout. It seems the brave clerk has decided to take a stand. He reaches for his mace. The goons respond with a savage flurry of blows. Finally, the two accomplices bail into the night. The staggered clerk then spots the man with the Uzi and tries to lock him inside. The gun-wielding thief releases the other worker and escapes. But not for long. The clerk's efforts paid off when he yanked the masks from his attackers' faces. The gang is soon identified, but are still at large. Coming up... Lawman exchanged gunfire with a gang of car thieves. Plus, five men take down a convenience store in a vicious quest for cash. Then, a deadly hostage standoff explodes on live television. That's next on Most Chuck. Criminal Behavior. Orange County, California. As a liquor store clerk enjoys a little lunch on the job, five men meander toward the register. The one in the red hat asks for a bottle of whiskey. When the woman turns to get it, he signals the others. Attack. Two storm the counter, taking the cashier down. A third orders a startled customer to the floor. The other two pull handguns and head for the back room, where they overwhelm a terrified employee. Sheriff Jim Amormino is stunned by the audacity of the midday operation. This goes down as one of the most dangerous and brazen robberies that I've seen in my career. I'm sure a great amount of fear went through those victims' minds. The gang uses zip ties to bind the workers' hands. Then they start searching for the loot. There's just one little problem. The gunmen in the back aren't finding any hidden stash. At the counter, the leaders fare no better. They actually have to untie the cashier so she can open the register for them. Their disappointing take doesn't live up to expectations, but the security cameras do. Because of this very good surveillance system that this liquor store has, we were able to identify the suspects. Within days of this robbery, three of the team members are identified. Hopefully, they'll soon be in custody. They deserve to be put away in prison for many, many years. This robbery was violent, and the suspect should pay dearly for it. Bangkok, Thailand. At a local courthouse, a sentencing has gone haywire. As Anon Tinamas was being put away on a concealed weapons charge, he repeated his crime. He pulled two hidden knives and took the court reporter hostage. 
Now he demands to air his grievances before a camera crew and one of Bangkok's most famous TV hosts. It's a delusional request. Officers stall for time by providing him some food. He calmly partakes, keeping the glinting steel just inches from the reporter's neck. Then, to keep his victim under control, he binds her wrists with strips of cable. Police aren't sure how to proceed until they get an idea. Give him what he wants. A cameraman and street reporter arrive to take the man's statement. The famous host is contacted by phone. Everything seems to be going the convict's way. He doesn't realize that the newsman is actually a cop. With Tanamas distracted by the call, the officer works out an escape signal with the hostage. Then they roll tape and their plan. The suspect never realized his mistake. With his hands occupied by the phone and mic, he was in no position to fight back. Tanamas is gang tackled. His weapons quickly secured. The hostage is ushered away, clearly drained by the ordeal. <laughs> Thankfully, her wounds are superficial, and the suspect is no longer a threat. He'll be back in court in a few days, this time to face charges for kidnapping. Istanbul, Turkey. Police are in a fast and furious pursuit of car thieves. Up ahead, a large truck pulls into the path of the stolen car. It's an 18-wheel roadblock. Officers race in, weapons drawn. They try to shoot out the tires. But the Mercedes speeds away. Cops stay right on their tail. With the tires shot, the crooks bail on foot. Police pursue them over a towering wall and into an open field. Suddenly, shots ring out in the darkness. Backup rushes in, firing a warning into the air. The suspects wisely choose to surrender rather than shoot it out. Now the hard part. Officers have to scale this 20-foot wall to reach patrol cars. With their prisoners in handcuffs. <laughs> Finally, the men are on their way to jail. It turns out that these high-speed hoodlums are key figures of an organized crime ring which might explain their willingness to risk their lives to avoid justice. Up next, when a gunman sticks up a drugstore, the pharmacist prescribes a face full of mace. Plus, inmates in homemade body armor clash head-on with riot police. And fists fly when a brave clerk foils a robbery. When most shocking, criminal behavior returns. Istanbul, Turkey. A man enters a quiet pharmacy to pick up his prescription. He pays for his pills. 
But then, he pulls a surprise on the pharmacist. A 9mm handgun. Suddenly, the woman pulls a surprise of her own. A can of mace. His eyes are blasted with the blistering spray. The bandit runs off. With the two women in hot pursuit, the brave pharmacist's performance is impressive. She appears to be gathering cash from the till when she reaches into the back of the register for her secret weapon. A hefty dose of mace was just what the doctor ordered to foil a robbery and possibly save her life. But cops in Pennsylvania, deep within the cells of Chester County Prison, inmates hold an uprising. Convicts cloak themselves in makeshift riot gear, using pillows as body armor. Armed with mattresses and food trays, the combatants prepare for battle. A deputy videotapes the standoff from behind protective glass. It appears that they're in a formation at this time, with four mattresses in front, a uh, man each one. Um, I guess it's kind of a shield. The ringleader is convicted murderer Akram Jones. Many inmates refuse to follow their fellow cons and take cover inside their cells. One felon douses the floor with baby oil. They're like really trying to make things unapproachable at this time. While another floods the room. Be advised that the K-block here is now being flooded. Akram works on a weapon. A ballpoint pen fastened to his knuckle. Okay. The guards issue a final warning. Okay, gentlemen, lay down on the floor. Your arms spread out. It does not appear the inmates are complying at this time, standing at a ready position. The convicts hold their ground. The inmates are getting into a formation now. And brace for a clash. As officers prepare to move in, the men inch forward. The guards come in firing, launching flashbang stun grenades and rubber bullets. The cons take cover in their cells. Akram is quickly overpowered. The potentially lethal uprising is suppressed. Close that door, pull him back in. There's like, there's a OC out there. These ragtag band of inmates tried to put up a fight, but in the end, only added more time to their stay in the big house. Hartford, Connecticut. A clerk makes change for a man at a convenience store, but this customer wants to clean out the cash drawer. He's over the counter in an instant. The crook quickly loses the upper hand. The clerk goes on the attack. He grabs the man's hood. The thief finally breaks out of the makeshift straitjacket. But he still has to fight to escape. This probably wasn't what he had in mind when he tried to rob this store blind. But thanks to the determined young clerk, his scheme went bust. Coming up. Get away, baby! Money-hungry felons try to swindle thousands by wrecking the family van. Oh, that's oh, yeah. But the payday for their insurance scam goes bust. That'll do it. Next on Most Shocking, Criminal Behavior. On our way down to take care of this mess right now. In Illinois, the owners of an old van are getting ready to trade in their vehicle for some quick cash. 
but they're not going to sell it. There's the tree where Steve's got to get his big ass head out of the way. They're going to crash it. If there's somebody in the house up there, we got to let them know we're doing it on purpose and they'll freak out. Even more brilliant, they're documenting the crime on video. We got it on videotape and camera. This right. is great. They thought it would be, I guess in their words, neat to uh, see themselves in action as they smash their van into a tree. The insurance fraud is discovered by state police agent Michael McConnell. The purpose of smashing the van into the tree was to obtain insurance money. I didn't have the money to repair it. Get out of the way, baby! I don't think it did it. Whoa! That ain't, that ain't gonna work. That ain't total. That's gonna do it. No, it's not. You gotta do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Hurry up, Rob. Back it up before it starts on fire. The first hit wasn't enough. They need more damage. Go no away! Here we go again, round two. Still not good enough. Watch out, Rob. To get bigger bucks, they need a bigger crash. Oh, that's oh, it. Yeah. That's just nasty. I love it. The insurance company is told there was a freak accident. They made a false police report, said they were driving the van, and a dog ran out in front of them, and they swerved to avoid the dog and hit a tree. The insurers bought the story and paid out a $4,400 claim. It looked like a perfect crime, except for one thing. The family never erased the videotape. An anonymous tipster slipped the evidence to state cops. That'll do it. Four people were arrested, including the van's owner. When we showed Teresa the tape, she turned very red in the face, kind of put her head down, uh, acted a little bit shocked and embarrassed. Get out of the way, baby! It may have been a low-budget video, but it was costly for the defendants. They were ordered to give back the $4,400 in addition to a hefty fine. As for the charming family home video, it's now being used in police training classes. Watch out, Steve. Where am I? On city streets. In convenience stores. Even behind bars. Officers and civilians alike square off against vicious criminals in the unwavering struggle for law and order. Let me see your hands right now! 